Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 4.5, completing the square. Let's get things started off with a vocab word. Vocab word is completing the square. And it is a process of rewriting a quadratic expression so that it is a perfect square trinomial. So for example, this would be a perfect square trinomial. We can rewrite this as x plus 3 times x plus 3, or we could take it one step farther, yes, and go x plus plus 3, that being squared, right? We're going to work a lot with this today. Or in algebra terms, you would have this jargon here, where it's b over 2, that's squared. You could rewrite this. Now, here's the key. You could rewrite this guy with this b over 2, right in for there, if I can make my arrow, right in for there, that being squared. So let's take a look at what these problems look like. Here, if you're asked to find the value of c, that makes the expression a perfect square trinomial. So let's try it out. There is some useful information right here. Remember ax squared plus bx plus c, and also now that c is going to equal b over 2 and that squared. So we have c, and that's going to be b, which is 8, and that go that's an 8, sorry, let's try that again, 8 over 2, and this is all going to be squared, and that's going to give us 4 squared, which is 16. So c is 16. I'm going to rewrite that as x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now, could I rewrite this as a perfect square trinomial? I could rewrite this guy as x plus 4 times the quantity x plus 4, or you could also write it as, as we'll be writing it today, x plus 4, and we square this whole thing. Let's try it here. Again, we have c equals b over 2. Well, what's my b? My b is 5, so it's going to be 5 over 2. That squared, and that gives me a 6.25. After you plug it in your calculator, writing our trinomial out, we have x squared plus 5x plus 6.25. Now, you think it would get a little messy, right, when we go from this step to our parentheses? What are we going to put in our parentheses? Well, don't panic because we have it right here. We're just going to put 5 halves in for these parentheses. So it's going to be plus 5 halves and plus 5 halves. So when you see something like this that we don't know how to factor this, you do not know what multiplies up to 6.25 but adds up to 5, well, if it's a perfect square trinomial when you're setting it up, just go ahead and take 5 divided by 2, and you can plug it right in. And then we have x plus 5 halves, and that squared, again, we'll be dealing with this a lot today. Now, let's actually solve by completing the square. When we solve by completing the square, we want our x squared term and our 16x term by itself. The first thing we want to do is to find our c term, right? The term that goes right after the 16x here. So how do I find that? I'm going to say c is, again, it's b divided by 2 and that squared. So that is negative 8 and it's squared, which equals 64. So now I'm going to take this 64 and add it here and add it right there to get now, to get x squared minus 16x plus 64 equals 49, all right? Because negative 15 plus 64 is a positive 49. Now let's factor this left side. We have an x minus 8 equals 49, and it's x minus 8 squared. Now, how do we get rid of the square? We're solving for x. How do we get rid of the square? We have to square root both sides. So when we square root both sides, we get x minus 8 equals, now what's the square root of 49? That is a positive negative 7. Remember, it's a positive negative 7. If we want to solve for x, we have to take it one step further. x minus 8 equals 7, and x minus 8 equals what else? A negative 7. So now we add the 8 over, so x equals a positive 15, and we add the 8 over again to get x equals 1. So we have our answers right here. X is 15 and X is 1. Now with 4, 
we want this. If we cannot make this a perfect square trinomial, if we can't factor it like x minus 8 squared, if we can't have it x minus 2 squared or something, we want to move this 3 over to the other side. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared minus 2x equals a positive 3 because I added it over to the other side. Now what I want to do, I want to find what my c is. Remember, c is negative 2 divided by 2, and that's being squared. So it's going to be negative 1 squared, which is 1. So I'm going to take this 1 and add it to both sides. So I add it to both sides. Rewriting again, I'm going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 4. Now, can I rewrite this as a perfect square trinomial? I can. It's just going to be x minus 1. That's going to be squared also equals 4. I want to solve for this x. So how do we solve for the x? I'm going to square root both sides. So it undoes the square. We have x minus 1 equals a positive negative. Please remember the positive negative 2. Breaking apart that positive negative, x minus 1 equals a positive 2, and x minus 1 equals a negative 2. Solving for x, we have x equals 3, and then x equals a negative 1. So these two would be my answers. Trying another one on 5. Before we subtract this 9 over, can we rewrite this as a perfect square trinomial right away? Well, how about if I break it down like this? If I go x minus 3 and x minus 3. Did I factor that correctly? Yes, I did because it multiplies to a positive 9, adds up to a negative 6. So let's keep going with it. That equals 20. Rewriting this, I have x minus 3. That can be squared equals 20. Now, how do we solve for this? We have to square root both sides square root both sides so I come up with a x minus 3 and that equals now is it a positive or a negative it is both positive and negative but does 20 come out nice it does not come out nice but you can go ahead if it says round to the nearest hundredth if necessary go ahead and take it to the nearest hundredth which is 4.47 also you could break it down and pull out a 4 which would be 2 square root 5 Positive and negative, but it says round to the nearest hundredth, so I break it down to the nearest hundredth. And I have x minus 3 equals now a positive 4.47, and x minus 3 equals a negative 4.47. Solving for x, I add the 3 over to get x equals 7.47, and here I get x equals a negative 1.47. Let's try number six. Is there any way I can break this down? No, I cannot make it look like this. So what do we have to do? I have to subtract that six over. So I subtract that six over to get x squared plus 4x equals a negative six. Now remember, I want to find my c to add to both sides. So what we do is go c equals. Then my b is four divided by 2 and I square that, that gives me a 2 squared, which is 4. So I add 4 to both sides. My now new equation is x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals a negative 2. Rewriting this, rewriting this guy, we can rewrite it how? x plus 2, that squared, right, equals a negative 2. How do we solve for x? We have to square root both sides. So when I square root both sides, I have x plus 2 equals now a square root of a negative 2. Can we take the square root of a negative 2? We cannot, but how did we learn it yesterday? We can take out this negative, and when we take out that negative, it turns into an i, and we'll still be left with a square root of 2, and then x plus 2 equals this mess, but what else do we need? It also is a positive negative i square root 2. Solving for x, 
Now we just subtract the two over, so we have x equals a positive negative i times the square root of 2 minus this 2 that we subtract over. So you might have imaginary numbers in here when we complete the square. So this positive and negative i square root 2 minus 2 would be your solution. Now one more with 7. Any time that you see a number in here, that a, we do not want that a there, so we have to divide all of this by 2, every single thing in here by 2. So I'm going to write it like dividing it by 2. So my new equation would be x squared plus 10x minus 4 equals 0. Once you do that, then it turns into the whole completing the square, what we've been doing. So I add the 4 over to get x squared plus 10x equals 4. Now what do I have to do? I have to find my c term. My c is going to be 10 divided by 2. That's squared. 10 divided by 2 is 5 squared, which is 25. So I add 25 to this side, add 25 right there. New equation, x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 29. Rewriting as x plus 5, that squared equals 29. Now I square root both sides, taking the square root of both sides to get x plus 5 equals. Now, again, we're writing this into the nearest hundredth, so it's plus minus 5.39. Solving this guy, I have x plus 5 equals a positive 5.39, and x plus 5 equals a negative 5.39. 3, 9. x solving, here we go, subtract the 5 over, x equals 0.39 for one answer, subtract the 5 over again to get x equals a negative 10.39 for your final answer, so these two would be a solution for number 7. And then just to recap on the steps that we took to complete the square, if we had the a term, you divided it out, then we put the constant on the right side of the equation. We added b over 2 in that square to each side. We write the left side as the square of a binomial, take square roots of both sides, and then solve. And that does it for section 4.5, completing the square. Good day.